ಸಂಧಿಷ್ಟುಂ ಜ್ವಲಂತ ಸರ್ವತೋ ಮುಖ ನೃಸಿಂಹಂ ಭೀಸನ ಭದ್ರ ಮೃತ್ಯು ಮೃತ್ಯು ನಮ್ಯಂ the emission or absorption of energy takes place from the source to an object by electromagnetic waves and each electromagnetic wave is characterized by its frequency by its wavelength frequency the velocity and wave number the electromagnetic waves are produced due to the vibration of the charged particle in the space the height to which the wave rises is called as the crest and the depth to which the wave falls is called as the trough the distance between two successive crests or two successive troughs are called as the wavelength represented by the letter lambda is uh, uh, expressed by unit meter centimeter or angstrom minute and every electromagnetic wave has its own wavelength the different electromagnetic waves have different wavelengths they are characterized by their wavelengths <clears throat> then comes the frequency the frequency is denoted by the lam- uh, letter lambda uh, pre- nu the greek letter nu where the nu the frequency is the number of waves passing through a point in a second of time it is expressed in hertz or cycles per second or kilo cycles per second and every electromagnetic wave has its own frequency the different electromagnetic waves have different frequencies then comes the velocity the velocity of a wave is the distance traveled by the wave in a second of time all electromagnetic waves propagate with the same velocity equal to the velocity of light represented by the letter c so now the c the velocity relates this frequency and lambda of electromagnetic waves so the c the total distance and the lambda is the wavelength and the frequency is the number of waves per second therefore the velocity c is equal to the number of waves per second that is nu and the wavelength the lambda so c is equal to nu lambda or nu is equal to c by lambda and c is a constant the velocity of light is constant therefore nu the frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength so those waves have short wavelength they have high frequency and those waves which have longer wavelength they have low frequency the frequency is low or frequency is high then comes the wave number the wave number is the reciprocal of the wavelength and it is dependent by the nu bar and have the unit centimeter inverse meter inverse now coming to the different type of electromagnetic radiations to remember them i have told you rmi who xyc the radio waves micro waves infrared waves visible light ultraviolet rays then uh, rmiv visible rmiv uh, rmiv xyc x rays gamma rays and cosmic rays so these are the different electromagnetic waves that are arranged radiations that are arranged in the decreasing order of wavelength is a spectrum of this radio this uh, electromagnetic waves now the region after the visible is called as ultraviolet because they have the smaller wavelength than the visible light and the region before the visible light in the electromagnetic radiation spectrum is have the longer wavelength than the visible light hence they are called as infrared so before red color of the visible light infrared after the violet color of the visible light is called as the ultraviolet so now we'll come to the next two that is uh, planck's planck's quantum 
theory of electromagnetic radiation. These are just like the tables in mathematics to know the multiplication and division in mathematics or do the arithmetic we remember the tables exactly to understand the quantum mechanics these are the simple theories which are the steps of the ladders to understand the quantum mechanical approach of atom. Now what is Planck? The Max Planck was a scientist and he proposed a theory basing on electromagnetic theory of electromagnetic radiation using the concept of quantum using the concept of quantum what is this word quantum quantum means definite amount the quantum see each class that my teacher takes filled with a quantum of the wisdom so the quantum of the wisdom i earn in a class is much more than i read for 12 hours so in one hour the quantum of wisdom that I learn or the quantum of knowledge I learn is much more than the number of 12 hours I read at myself. So that quantum means a definite amount. So this word quantum one should feel quantum never children never think quantum is something new or quantum is something extra. It is a quantum it is expressing definite amount. The quantum of food given to us is not enough for the whole day. We are using the word quantum. So this Max Planck, why he concept this? Because what happened when you studied the spectrum of an atom according to the electro theory of classical electrodynamics, the electron is ready, the charged particle is radiating energy. So there should be a continuous line in the spectrum. But the atomic spectra was never found to be continuous. It was found to be discontinuous. Thus, that is the reason the theory of classical electrodynamics failed and it could then the Planck's quantum theory uh, explain better knowledge about it. So they, when they studied the atomic spectrum, when they take a hot body and study by its spectrum, it was expected to be what? A continuous, but lines were not continuous, the lines were discontinuous. Nothing is continuous in this world, children. I, I, we inhale and exhale. We are not inhaling continuously or we are not exhaling continuously. We inhale, then exhale, then inhale, then exhale. Then you, when you come to your chest, the heart bit, you have a bit, then there is a gap, then there is a bit, then there is a gap. Now if you come to the pulse of ours, we have a bit of the pulse, then gap, then bit of the pulse, then gap. Between two days, you have one sunset is again followed by sunrise. So you have a sunset. So before that, you had sunrise. And after that, you have a, having a uh, sunrise. The bright light is not continuous. The bright light is followed by the dark light. Again, two bright lights, they are bright days are followed by a dark. So nothing is continuous in the world. Probably the nature has taught Planck to propose this concept of quantum and this theory of radiation having this. So the Max Planck in the year 1905 proposed the Planck's quantum theory of radiation. So what is that? So the fundamental postulates of Planck's quantum theory of radiation is one. First thing he says, the energy is never emitted or observed never emitted or observed continuously as I tell you children the nature is the best teacher for a scientist so what is ha what happens to us we inhale and exhale, inhale, then exhale, then inhale. We are not inhaling continuously, we are not exhaling continuously. Nothing is continuous in this world, then he probably he thought like that. Then how 
the energy will be continuously that uh, will be emitted that which objected to Rutherford model of atom the electron while moving around the nucleus emits energy continuously that is the objection so that objection is not that objection is not correct he said that objection is not correct because the energy is never emitted or uh, 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 observed continuously the energy is never emitted or observed continuous continuously it is uh, emitted the emission of the emission or absorption absorption of energy takes place in different in definite amount called definite amount called quantum and its plural is called quanta plural is quanta just like data you are having the plural data its singular is a dictum and like that quantum is its plural is quanta so the energy is emitted or observed never emitted or observed continuously it emission absorption of energy takes place in definite amounts in discontinuous manner in discontinuous manner means what just if you if i say this then what the energy is never going like this so this is a source and to the object the energy this wave is not moving like this continuously what it moves it moves uh, it mo one wave comes then another wave comes then another wave comes then another wave comes the, it is not continuous wave it is by discontinuously one wave comes like this then again another another wave then another wave then another wave and that one wave is called quantum that one wave is called as the quantum so then what is this quantum he explains that one wave this is the quantum this is another quantum this is another quantum this is another quantum he explained like this so it is never continuously the energy is not going it is admitted or observed discontinuously by definite amounts by definite amounts called as quantum then what is that quantum he wanted to explain what is that quantum second facility is the quantum is a definite amount of energy is equivalent to a photon because during that time the Einstein has proposed his theory the Einstein theory and that part among the he explained this cell the power the energy transmitted from the Sun by the particles and that amount of energy is called the one photon of energy so photon or unit wave unit wave this quantum is nothing but a unit wave that means uh, the energy is never emitted or observed by a body continuously like this it is now never like this it is never like this it is never like this takes place how it comes one quantum one wave then another wave then another wave then another wave so this is one quantum this one quantum this one quantum and one quantum so discontinuous there is a gap between two one one comes then another comes then another energy comes like this a pocket of energy it is a pocket of energy that quantum is what a pocket of energy are equivalent to a photon 
and or is you can call as a unit wave is called as unit wave then he want by using the theory of electromagnetic radiation he wanted to explain what is the amount of energy associated with one quantum what is the amount of energy is associated with one quantum he wanted to explain so the energy associated the energy e if you say energy e e associated with one quantum is uh, proportional to is directly proportional directly proportional to the frequency of the wave of radiation so he says that energy associated to each each quantum is proportional to its frequency number of waves so one wave comes so number of waves they are called the frequency and that is proper this energy total energy is equal to this so therefore this e energy is equal to what he says h nu he proposed this equation is called planck's quantum equation this is e equal to h nu three letter word three letter word very wonderful equation he gave e equal to h nu e equal to h nu so this e is equal to h nu so this h is a constant called as planck's constant that's constant is called as planck's constant and the frequency this nu is the frequency of frequency of the wave of radiant energy frequency of the wave of the radiant energy and the planck's constant and this value of the planck's constant h is equal to 6.62 into 10 to the power minus 27 arg second or 6.62 in 10 to the power minus 31 joules second joule second or 10 to the power minus 27 arc second this value is a very important value a student should know and because very frequently when we will be calculating the numericals basing on this uh, planck's quantum theory and the theory of electromagnetic radiation bohr model of atom we will using the value of this planck's quantum uh, this uh, h planck's constant 6.62 10 to the minus 27 arc second and 6.6 or 1031 this so this is the way you can say that so one mistake i have done children this is 6 this is not 31 this 6 6.62 in 10 to the minus 34 joule second just kindly make a correction it is 6.62 10 to the minus 34 joule second or 6.62 in 10 to the power minus 27 arc second so what we learn now from this so if you now go to the uh, theory of electromagnetic radiation e equal to now we got h nu and in h is the planck's constant and now what is this it's known from the theory of electromagnetic radiation it's known what nu is equal to c by lambda what c c is velocity of light c is the velocity of light and lambda is the wavelength wavelength so therefore if you put the value of nu here e is equal to comes into h into c by lambda we got one relationship e equal to h nu 
and we got another relationship E equal to H into because nu is what C by lambda H into C by lambda. So now H is a constant and C is a constant. H is a constant and C is a constant. Therefore E is inversely proportional to wavelength. E is inversely proportional to wavelength. That means the, those waves which have a smaller wavelength have larger energy. Those waves which have a smaller wavelength, if you see the X-ray, very small wavelength, so has the penetrating power, can penetrate through wood, can penetrate through metal. The gamma ray, I have shown you the electromagnetic radiation, RMI, Bhu, X, Y, C. X is the X-ray, Y is the gamma ray. The wavelength of gamma ray is smaller than the wavelength of X-ray. Hence, the gamma ray can penetrate through the iron seeds, can penetrate the wood, can penetrate the wall, and very powerful. They are used for the treatment of the cancer. They just burn the, the cells, cancer cells. So powerful are these gamma ray. So that tells us that those who have smaller wavelength have higher energy. So this is a very important relationship we learn. E is inversely proportional to wavelength and E is directly proportional to frequency. Directly proportional to frequency. Then what conclusion we can make from this? We can make from this those waves, those waves have short wavelength, shorter wavelength have higher frequency, larger, uh, higher frequency, have higher frequency and uh, are associated with larger energy, are associated with larger energy. So the energy associated that if you come the ultraviolet ray comes after the violet, after the violet. So you have the ultraviolet is very, very, very dangerous in the solar eclipse. We are not asked, we are asked not to see the sun during eclipse. The reason is because it is producing ultraviolet rays and those ultraviolet rays have a very, very small wavelength than the visible ray. Some visible ray comes from the sun. We can see the sun ray but we cannot see the ultraviolet ray because if the R, M, I, Bu, X, Y, C, I have told you the VGR, the violet and then comes the red. So the violet, after violet comes the ultraviolet. We can see the violet ray of the sun but not the ultraviolet. So this is the thing and or those waves have longer wavelength. Those waves those waves have longer wavelength longer wavelength are have lot long uh, lower lower frequency have lower frequency and smaller energy, smaller energy. So now if you go to the radio stations, if you come to the, um, now to nowadays though there is no radio, but when there was a radio, on the radio dial you have MW, medium wave, then you had short wave, SW, short wave and uh, is a more costly radio, uh, short wave 1, short wave 2, short wave 3. Means what? Uh, shorter waves. So those which are transmission was taking from BBC or Voice of America, they were coming in short waves, 25 meter band. 
and those which are coming from the local Katak or Akashbani Katak, Sambalpur, they were coming in the medium way. So that then at that time we were not understanding it. When now when we studied this Planck's quantum theory of electromagnetic radiation, because this radio waves, uh, the transmission of uh, the voice that take place by the radio waves, the transmission in the TV that you are using by these radio waves, uh, the transmission is done by them. So uh, now we can understand short wave transmission was taking place means they are coming from longer distance so they have the la amount of energy was more so it comes from uh, they were transmitted by short waves and uh, when these uh, local stations we have we coming uh, medium waves uh, because they have the larger wavelength the, the energy is lower required so by a larger wavelength medium wavelength so their mw in the we were having at the time and the dial of the radios that's then the next postulate he proposed <coughs> then how the transmission take place how this quantum uh, how the transmission take place to explain that he has a postulate the energy is uh, emitted or observed by whole number multiple of quantum whole number multiple of quantum means what h in u or 2 h in u or 3 h in u like this whole number multiple of quantum but never in fractional never in fraction never in fraction that means 0 0.5 quantum not possible or 1 half 1 by 3 by 4 quantum not possible half wave 1 fourth wave not possible so wave comes means one wave comes half wave does not come the, why it is? Because one wave is one, why this whole number multiple of quantum? Because what is a quantum? A unit wave. So wave is not half, wave is not one fourth. So then how the energy will be, uh, one, the, uh, the transmission take place by half wave? So the, the, it's never, but never in fraction 0 0.h nu, but 3 4 by 4 h nu, 0 0.75 h nu, not like this. So this is again, if you, uh, this reminds me, this reminds me of Dalton that uh, the atom is cannot be subdivided. The atom cannot be subdivided. So also the wave cannot be subdivided. That is called unitary theory. That you come to this religion is a unitary theory. The whole thing is one uh, Parang Brahma. There is a sloka in Sanskrit uh, um, <coughs> Uh, explaining this, everything ends in the uh, one place that is called the Param Brahm, the Om, the Lord Vishnu. So that we, every mantra that you chant, the mantra begins with Om first. Om Trayambakam Jajamahe Sugandhim Pusti Bhaddhanam Urvaru Kamiyavandhanat Murtiyur Mukhyamamrutat. Now when you come to the Lord Vishnu, Om Nara Yanaya Bidmahe Basudeva Yadhimahe Tanmu Bistum Prachodaya Om. Because this Om comes from the everything ends in by unit, unitary theory. So the God is one. Different religions are different paths to meet the same God. So different religions, they pray the same God, the one, the God is one, and different, they are the different ways. Everything comes the same, same. Quantum of energy, unit wave atomic nature, everything ends in one atom, fraction, nothing is fraction, nothing is subdivided, everything ends in one. There is a sloka in Sanskrit, Aka, Akasam patitam tayam jatha gathati sagare sarvadevam namaskrutyam kesabam pratigachati. Wonderful thing has been told, explain this, that comes from our chemistry, physics, everything. Say, Akasam patitam tayam means water. The whatever the rain comes from the um, uh, cloud they fall at different places 
and what they come the different they come in the different rivers the stream and ultimately what happens all the streams they meet at one point that is called the ocean akasam patitvam jatha sagare sarvadevam namaskrityam kesavam pratigachati whatever god or goddess we worship ultimately it goes to lord vishnu and every mantra is starts with om the same thing the quantum the quantum of energy one quantum two quantum three quantum four quantum never a fractional so this quantum theory is a explained to explain that uh, what the the spectrum is discontinuous not a continuous one from that only one incident uh, that prompted planck to propose this quantum theory to explain many aspects of uh, the fundamentals of science and taking this planck's quantum theory of electromagnetic radiation then bohr proposed a model of atom which could overcome all the objections raised on the other four model of atom taking this planck's quantum theory of electromagnetic radiation mark the neil bohr the danish scientist proposed a model of atom called as bohr model of atom the postulates he proposed they call the bohr theory and that could overcome all the objections raised on the other four model of atom and could explain the spectrum of atom atomic we call it atomic spectra or spectrum of atom and could explain the hydrogen spectrum could explain the velocity of electron the energy of electron the radius of an orbit the energy an electron has to observe when jumps from one place to the other place every mathematically he derived the model of art he used the mathematics in explaining the model of atom hence that is called bohr theory or bohr model of atom and it is called quantum mechanical approach to atom so this bohr model of atom was proposed in the 1913 so 1911 was another four model of atom before the 1911 this theories were there max planck has proposed 1905 einstein e equal to mc square that has been einstein equation is proposed already during 1900 1905 that was proposed so this theory sir rutherford has has not taken account because his interest was not all this his interest was to configure it where is electron where is proton inside the atom that was his intention so he conducted that theory now to explain this uh, this theory we will come to the use this uh, quantum uh, planck's quantum theory so before that planck's quantum theory another word i am i we will be using that word is called uh, atomic number so let me explain this atomic number then next class we will go for the atomic number means what roll number you have the roll numbers a student in a class is identified by roll numbers not by the name the reason because in by one name there are many students will be there but the roll number is one and that roll number is a fundamental property of a student in the class at a class in a class in a school or in a college a student is placed correctly identified correctly by roll number hence it is called by a number by a number hence that is called as a roll number the number is called uh, my roll number is 5 it is a number 5 but a roll it called roll number because in a thousand students are there in my school roll number 5 class 1 <clears throat> then i can say that that boy can be pinpointed that boy can be pinpointed so that is a fundamental thing for a student exactly this atomic number is uh, represented by the letter z and it was discovered by mosley it was discovered by mosley in the year 1913 think this 1913 is one year before the world war in 1914 the first world war take place when all the country people the politicians they were busy in their preparing for the world war the scientists were discovering bohr model of atom 1913 
So, and here also they mostly discover the atomic number. So, what is the atomic number? Now, the atomic number <coughs> is a fundamental property, is an ordinal number, is a ordinal number. Ordinal word I am using is a serial number. So, ordinal number which is a fundamental fundamental property of the element. An element is identified a number and that number is called atomic number. Why atomic number? Because the property of all elementary properties are an element are atomic in nature. Atomic in nature. The atom defines the property of the element. Hence that number is called atomic number. It is numerically equal numerically equal to number of number of electrons number of electrons or protons protons present in the atom in the atom so that is the fundamental because number of electrons what the electron? We have already read the, the definition of valency. The valency is the combining capacity which explains, which is equal to the number of electrons to be lost or to be gained by the atom of an element to attain octet in its outermost cell. So the electron is defining the combining capacity. So the pro chemical property of an element is based upon whom? the electron and that electron how many electrons are there they are they told by whom the atomic number then protons where are the protons the protons are present inside the nucleus the nucleus is placed at the center of atom and all the and the nuclear charge that nucleus is holding the electrons all the electrons are held by whom by the nucleus the nucleus is attracting the electrons by the force of electrostatic attraction this nucleus Keeps, uh, makes the electrons to move without falling into it. There's just the outward centrifugal force of the electron is just balanced by the force of electrostatic attraction existing with the nucleus and the electron. So this nucleus, the protons, they entire they concentrate the uh, center of the atom, and uh, the nucleus consists of the protons and neutrons. Uh, and the proton and neutron, they, the number of neutrons to be there are decided by the number of, by the number of protons. So the protons, they determine the physical property, the nuclear charge of the atom of element and the electron, the combining capacity, hence the atomic number determines the properties of the, uh, is a fundamental property. And what this, how it was this confirmed by mostly? What he did, now the atomic mass and the electrons and protons were discovered. So to know that, and uh, brother Mandelieb have proposed the Mandelieb periodic table. The physical and chemical properties of the elements are periodic function of the atomic mass. He arranged the periodic table according to atomic mass. So now the question came in the mind of the scientist, this mostly. What he did, he plotted the atomic number atomic number of the elements and did and took different elements in the cathode ray and determined their x-ray produced by the cath these cathode rays were proposed upon the anode they, he took the different anodes he took copper then iron then gold then silver different anodes he took and call and uh, strike them by the cathode rays and x-rays will produced then the he plotted the square root of the x rays square root of the frequency of the x rays square root of the frequency of x rays in the x axis and he found a straight line graph a straight line graph he found a straight line graph and what is the straight line graph what is the, what is the equation y is equal to mx plus c is a straight line if it passes to origin it is y is equal to mx so that y is proportional to x but when he plotted against the atomic mass he plotted the 
atomic mass in the x-axis and uh, the square root of the same frequencies of x-rays of different elements and he found the graph is zigzag. He found the graph that is so there is no what is a, a straight line straight line is a linear relationship so this y is the property and uh, this x is the atomic number this x is the atomic so property is directly proportional to what is proportional to the x so the property of an element has a linear relationship with whom the atomic number not a linear relationship with whom the atomic mass so this was discovered by mostly in the 1913 hence the periodic table was a periodic law was modified as a modern periodic law the physical and chemical properties of the elements are periodic function of the atomic number then all the elements were arranged according to their atomic number and surprisingly one good thing found no element changed its position in the manly periodic table which he plotted basing on atomic mass see the penetrating vision of the scientist Mandelieff who proposed the periodic table in 1869 exactly the same thing when the atomic number was discovered in 1913 the modern periodic table is nothing but a replica of the Mandelieff periodic table Mandelieff periodic table proposed by atomic mass and when the law was changed the elements were arranged in the atomic number the periodic table no element found to change its position in the periodic table so that was the credit of Mandelieff that he has a penetrating vision to unseen future so now children atomic number is the fundamental property of the element atomic number is equal to number of electron number of protons present atom atomic number of copper is 29 means 29 electrons are there 29 protons are there our atomic number of iron is 26 means 26 electrons are there 26 protons are there so now using this concept of atomic number this theory of electromagnetic radiation Planck's quantum theory of magnetic radiation we will propose a revised theory proposed by Bohr the Bohr theory or the Bohr model of atom which he proposed 1913 basing on Planck's quantum theory of electromagnetic radiation. So next class I will talk to you the Bohr model of atom. Thank you very much for your patient hearing.